Come on, spinning wheel of death. There it goes. We are we are live now. Yay. Um, it's been it's actually been up for about fifteen seconds. You know, unfortunately, uh, when I'm running on an old computer here, sometimes it's a little slower than uh, technology should be. But um, welcome everybody. Um, if you're just tuning in, uh, I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to kind of log in here. On the page, uh, but tonight is going to be a brand new segment um, that's coming to you from uh, Pure Bowling and the Brands of Brunswick, and our focus is going to be called uh, Meet the Staff Mondays, and Meet the Staff Mondays is going to be geared around um, players and ambassadors for the Brands of Brunswick, so I thought what better way um, to kick this off but to uh, actually have a live session here with uh, Columbia 300's newest staff member in the East here, Alyssa Balicki. So Alyssa, hi. say hi to everybody. Sound great. Nice to meet you too, Sounds Lane. Like, <laughs> Lane San. I think I saw that uh, Lane is actually out in uh, Vegas now. So hopefully you have a good time out there. But, um, you know, again, uh, we're just going to have a general conversation here so we can kind of get to, to know Alyssa a little better and, uh, maybe get some background um, from her kind of on her career and, you know, aspirations and, and what she uh, wants to be when she grows up. So uh, Alyssa, you know, first and foremost, uh, give us a little bit hometown. Where are you from? How old are you? So I'm 24 and I'm from Hazleton, Pennsylvania, a little small town. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hazelton. So, um, you know, kind of, kind of north of here, going up towards uh, Wilkesbury, Scranton area. Yeah. Um, and uh, what, what's, uh, what do you call your home house, Alyssa? Where do you do most of your bowling so, out of? I originally started bowling out of Bowl Arena, but when I got introduced to TJ, uh, there was just so much more opportunity there. So, I technically call my home house Strike Zone Alleys in Pottsville, which is Great. about a and you, and you <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So not too bad. Definitely a strike zone. Um, that's uh, one of Andy Brenneman or I'm sorry, Terry Brenneman centers. Yeah. And uh, you met TJ Trout, who happens to be a, a good friend of uh, mine and, and the shop. So uh, I believe that's uh Kegler Pro shop. Absolutely. And um, how long have you been with TJ? Ooh, um, probably since my freshman year of high school. So probably about yeah. eight or more years now. Okay, great. So, you know, I'm assuming, did you have a, you know, did you have a high school program um, in the area you were from? Was it pretty prevalent in your area? Uh, I did have a high school program. It wasn't super big in my area, but we did make it to States my senior year. Okay. <laughs> so that was exciting. And I got introduced to TJ through high school bowling, actually. Uh, one of the kids on the team told me about him uh, and to go and get some lessons, get some ball dr balls drilled, see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, good. So I, I know he's uh, speaking to TJ. I think you worked a little bit with him, maybe trying to get in to learn a little bit of the shop side of it, kind of learning the balls and stuff, which is a huge part of our game. But I, I believe as well, you know, we talked, you know, about getting hooked up with him. And then you did go on and uh, you had a collegiate career. Where'd you do your uh, collegiate bowling at? I went to Long Island University in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Kayla Jones is the coach. And I bowled for four years there, and I we went to NEC Championships. We came in second. That was, like, one of our highlights. And I went That's to amazing. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, when I made it for um, intercollegiate singles. I made it. Okay. Sorry, just little highlights. No, no, it's good. It's good. And, and you know, during, you know, it's always awesome to hear about the collegiate career and, you know, how strong uh, – women's bowling is in general, um, women's bowling, you know, obviously being an NCAA sport, uh, depending on what college you go to, you know, um, and then from there, a lot of these girls, especially uh, of your age, are now getting to get a taste of the PWBA tour uh, returning. So um, what's, what's your thoughts on the, the PWBA tour? Is that like a, would that be like a next step for you in your, your career here? Absolutely. I did a couple store stops tour stops right out of college. Um, I just wasn't as seasoned, wasn't as ready, but that's okay. They were great learning experiences. So just working on the game, I obviously just started a full-time job um, at Geisinger Danville Hospital. 
Okay. So that's a little struggle right now, trying to practice as much as they do out there, because that's one of the things that I noticed is you really have to be on top of your game, practicing as much as you can, being in the gym as much as you can, doing whatever you can. Right. And that's, you know, that's a big one. And I mean, the even going back to the college days, I mean, obviously, being a, a athlete and balancing the the sports schedule along with the education, which is actually the most important part of it, right? Yeah. So you know, you, you mentioned that you know you're working at Geisinger, so you went to school. What was your what was your major then? Uh, respiratory therapy. So I'm a registered respiratory therapist, and uh, going through it with school was actually pretty challenging. Kayla worked very well with me, for, like flying me out um, maybe a day late for some of the tournaments because I had oh, clinical wow. days that I had to do. It, it was a struggle. Everyone like on the team would always be um, listening to music, like jamming out, and I would have my headphones in, like listening to my professor's lecture. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that's tough. And I can only imagine, I mean, just hearing, you know, respiratory and working in a hospital right now that obviously these last few months have probably been pretty challenging for you as well. I mean, yeah. um, that little uh, thing, what do they call it? COVID? Um, yeah. <laughs> just a little uh, it might, might have something to do with respiratory. So I'm assuming you've uh, been dealing with that. And, uh, you know, from not just myself, but for everybody, you know, for the frontline workers and stuff, you know, we thank you for, you know, what you are doing, you know, to try to get us through here. You know, we, it's great to be able to go in there and, you know, for us to be able to talk about the game and what we want to do with it. But, uh, um, none of that's possible unless we have, you know, the healthcare industry and, and other individuals. So, you know, we can relate to that because, um, with the PWBA tour, obviously a lot of these girls, like you said, you know, they have great regiments, um, when it comes to practice sessions and stuff, but a lot of them are uh, working professionals, if you will. So it is that mm -hmm. fine balance between, you know, finding life on tour, um, you know, versus that home life balance and kind of, you know, sometimes having to pick and choose um, what tournaments they can hit and what, which ones they can't. And, you know, that's, it's a challenge. And, uh, you know, I think it's something you'll be able to hit head on and, you know, being that now, you know, you, you signed on with uh, Columbia 300, which is, you know, exciting news. You're going to get to work with some of the uh, the best reps that are in the industry as well. So, you know, when you are out there, you're going to have some extra eyes and ears. And that does go a long yes. way when you're out on tour. Absolutely. I definitely noticed that when I was doing uh, the one pro stop right out of college. That's a huge help. Even someone to just have to go grab your ball because you don't even have a chance to honestly really leave the lanes that much. It really makes such a difference. People don't, you don't see what your, what your staffers seeing behind you. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, we talk a lot about bowling. So, you know, what, what are kind of, what's your goal? So obviously you went to college, you probably wanted to, you know, make it to inter singles and make it through the team, but I mean, okay. College is behind you now. The career's kind of kicked off so yeah. Alyssa like, what is Alyssa Balicki's goals for bowling what do, what do you want to do I would ideally like to obviously join tour maybe part-time as starting off as I get more um experience in my hospital I would get more time off as I go so hopefully with more time off there I could do more full-time on tour that would be an ideal situation because I love watching it. Even when I'm at work, if I have a chance, it's on my phone playing. Everyone's like, are you watching bowling? And I'm like, absolutely I am. <laughs> so that would be an ideal situation to be able to fully go on tour, just to say that I at least did it for a year, see how it goes. Yeah. So. And, and I, I think it's a, it's a great stepping point, you know, and it was really nice the other year when the PWBA tour actually had a stop at ABC West up in yes, Canada because that, that was close to home. You know, it was it was amazing just at the crowds that were in that place. And you know, unfortunately, Ooh. with uh, you know some sponsorship, uh, conf you know, conflictions between uh, title sponsor Pepsi versus Coke, that's why it's not going back there. Um, oh. As you know, the PWBA tour, Pepsi is a major sponsor. Um, so they got to carry it in the center. So that was, uh, they had stepped in that time to, uh, fill in for, uh, the Orlando one that got canceled. So hopefully one day we can get something close to the backyard again. And, you know, it had to be fun. I mean, if you bowled that event there, you obviously probably had some, you know, close friends and family members that were able to come out and watch you compete at the highest level, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 
Pretty, pretty amazing. But uh, I, I know before we got on the uh, feed here, too, one of the other things uh, you did mention is um, not even from the, the bowling side, but you actually dabbled a little bit in coaching yourself as well. Yeah, I actually uh, the athletic director of my old high school told like reached out to me and said the coach is retiring this year. Would you be interested in coaching? And I was like flabbergasted I was like oh my god like that's such an honor like thank you so much but unfortunately I wasn't able to do it full-time but they did get um, another girl who was also on my team just a year behind me to be the head coach and I was just the assistant but I was able to work with the kids a lot we made it to regionals which is a big um, step for high school bowling around Pennsylvania we were close to states but close only counts in horseshoes <laughs> That's right. So I still have a lot of the kids asking me like, hey, if we go back, are you doing it again? Like they they really appreciated all of the knowledge I brought to them and everything. It was honestly really satisfying to work with them. And it, it, you know, that's it's definitely a rewarding part. I mean, I, I know growing up, you know, I always looked up to, uh, you know, so many players. And then when I when I got to, you know, the older age and I started to be able to work with people, I realized how much I fell in love with the coaching aspect of it. But um, we did have a question that came across here. It's pretty similar to that. So, you know, she might be sitting a few feet from me, but see if we can get this up here and if it'll show. Yeah, come on. Oh, technology is only good when it works. All right. Well, it doesn't want to go up, so I'll just ask the question. Oh, there it went. You can't see it. If you, you can't see it on your end. With the question that's coming up, there's a little bit of lag on my end. Um, but it says, you know, Basically, you know, as you're getting a little bit like, who did you look up to when, when you were younger? I mean, did you have a certain player or did you have a family member or, you know, what, who was that one person when you were younger? You said, wow, you know, like, I want to be this person when I grow up or I want to throw it like her or him. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, younger, just starting out, there was a girl who was already on the high school team when I was still probably in middle school. And my mom worked at the bowling alley that the high school team uh, bowls out of. So when she would be at work, she would have no one to watch me. So I would go with her and I would bowl next to them. Like I would specifically get the lane right next to them so I could watch them and they could watch me. Uh, her name was Steph Fudge and her grandfather actually the one day decided to like full on like coach me because he saw potential in me. So I was like, oh, I want to be like her. Like she throws it so good. She's so nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> so that's, that's who I looked up in my great. hometown too. Okay, so you had hometown. Did you uh, obviously there was a, a lag in women's bowling um, as far as the tour? You know, in, in some of those years you would have been growing up, but you know, before that, any you know professional women you kind of like or in all, even now, like who's who's your favorite person right now to watch? Um, you cannot give me as the answer because I stink. All right, no. I can't lie. It's it's Shannon O'Keefe, the one and only. I love hey, her. I love everything she's about. She's yeah, all about she's, uh, positivity. Yep. You go, sorry. <laughs> positivity, you know, the, uh, the, the work ethic, uh, things along yes. those lines. Um, obviously, you know, Shannon is a, an incredible player. I've been very blessed to have worked with her for a number of years, even out on tour with her, and, uh, you know, gotten to know her on the lanes and uh, off the lanes, an even better friend and even better person, but uh, a great one to look up to um, when it's coming to how, to how to be a champion, right? I mean, uh, you know, if I'm going to base myself and, and, and look at individual players, you know, now that uh, she's definitely one that just stands out and says, wow, you know, this is, this is what it is, right? This could be the pinnacle. And, you know, uh, any kid that gets to uh, basically bowl uh, for that program with her and Brian and even, you know, Matt Farber, who helps out in there. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. I actually got to meet uh, one of your teammates from out that way, a younger lady. Uh, we were out there in Illinois a couple weeks ago and I met uh, Taylor Bailey and uh, another girl who throws it exceptional that went through that McKentry program. So, yes. um, awesome. I mean, it, you, so you, you know, you did some of the coaching on yourself and um, any aspirin. I mean, I know you're working in the medical field now, but you ever think about, you know, collegiate oh, coaching, anything along those lines, or is this, uh, I don't know, maybe is enough for me right now, but maybe eventually that would be amazing. It was actually awesome during collegiate times when we would bowl against McKendry and I actually got to see Shannon, like work with the girls and have them in action. And I really actually got to like connect with her and talk to her a couple of times. We got a selfie together. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah. I know her. Yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. So we're hitting about, believe it or not, because it's very easy to talk and and, and go. We, we hit like the 15 minute mark and there's a couple people that are chirping in here. It's mainly some old friend you've known. Looks like Lane Sant. Bradley's. <laughs> you know, asking for your phone number and all that other stuff. It's, they don't have anything better to do in Las Vegas right now, except for watch uh, the pure, which is great. Cause I, I appreciate it. And, uh, but, um, before that, like what else about Alyssa Blicky? What, what's one kind of maybe unique thing about you, maybe even outside of bowling, like what outside of bowling, what, what, what's your big interest? What are you into? You a book nerd. I mean, it could be anything. Don't judge me, but I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd. Okay. <laughs> I hey. love Harry Potter. Super into it. I cannot wait to go to Universal. <laughs> this is a judge-free zone. I, I am guilty that during COVID, I may or may not have watched the Lifetime Movie Channel a lot by myself. Nobody else was in the house. It, so it's definitely not a judge-free zone, and they make me laugh that I couldn't turn away. So it's, you know, but that, that that's, that's, uh, Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I know uh, a couple of people that were just down and got to enjoy the uh, the stuff down in Disney there. So uh, I I have seen them all, so I can appreciate that. Um, but let me see. We got a couple more questions in here, and we'll try to answer them here. So, uh, what do you like? They want to know what is your number one bowling achievement thus far? What are you the most proud about so far in your career? Uh, so besides. Uh making ITCs for intercollegiate singles uh, college. I would say my first 300, I was probably the most proud of because it was at championship weekend in front of mm -hmm. Parker Bone. Uh, I think Tommy Jones was there that year. It was just such an experience to have the five like PBA pros there. And I threw my very first 300. Yep. Actually, Dana Brown just popped in and said, you know, he still has the video of you throwing 300 uh, Hazeltown Mifflin match. Mm -hmm. um, one of his boys, I guess he coached, had one at the same time. So, yeah, pretty same cool method, little uh, thing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same game. That's it was awesome. so cool. I don't know who finished yeah. first. I think I might have finished first. Thank God. I was probably nervous. I wouldn't want to finish yeah. second. But we're, we're all nervous, you know, about 300s here and there. And then, you know, even now, you know, it's uh, the legs go together a little bit when you get there. But, you know. Oh, yeah. The My first one, first one. Been, yeah, everybody remembers that. It's the hardest one. Getting the first yeah. shot in the tenth is probably harder than his wealth. But uh, I was crying uh, already in the first shot of the tenth. I was so nervous. I didn't even throw the first shot yet, <laughs> and they said that they saw my skirt like shaking at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how many are you up to now? How many? Uh, what, what are you at for a career three hundreds? Still only two. It's nothing been wrong with that. So it's, <laughs> nothing wrong with that as well. But you know, we talked we talked a whole bunch, you know, about some of that other stuff. Um, obviously, Columbia three hundred, exciting news. So, yes. you know, tell me, like, right, you know, how long you've been throwing um, the uh, the brands of Brunswick, or specifically, I know you were kind of more on the the EBI side beforehand. But what has been kind of your uh, your go to balls over the years, and uh, what's your favorite in the bag right now? Ooh, okay. So overall, I really always like loved having kind of a big arsenal and not really sticking to just one brand. And that's why, like, what really drew me to EBI is you kind of had track, Ebonite, like uh, Columbia 300, you know, you had all of them. And now that the brands of Brunswick took over, it's nice to finally have the Brunswick balls back in my bag. I was a huge LT48 fan, a fanatic fan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm super excited about that. But honestly, one of my favorite balls in my bag right now, ooh, okay, I have a couple, I can't lie. So okay. benchmark ball, web tour. Okay. Absolutely. The original. Yeah, the original web tour. I haven't drilled the hybrid yet, but I heard that is absolutely amazing from you. <laughs> I'm from yes, I'm not the only one. You're, you're going to see a whole bunch of them going down the there. There's an ad that there may or may not be. You know, talk about it Tuesday or throw it Thursday. Maybe the web tour hybrid this week. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Winky, winky. It, it, you yeah. Know. Absolutely. And I even have a web tour international. Like I absolutely love that ball. So I have to get the hybrid just obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and for like a stronger ball, like a fresh off the, off the pattern, I'm really enjoying my fugitive solid. It's really good on the fresh. We drilled it print pinned down. So it really gets off the spot pretty nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, and that's a that's a really strong cover on that ball, and and really digs in the in the body of the lane. So that's yeah. another one that's a, that's a ton of fun to throw. Um, there's there's a couple more that are coming out here that were just talked about. Like I know it crosses over into the uh, Ebonite brands, but the arrow right now is has been unbelievable for the people mm-hmm. I've seen throw it. I had a good question that came through here, and you know Lane and Bradley are trying to roast people. So Lane asked, "What EBI eyeball can I do to improve my average by five pins?" Lane, I'm going to tell you either a maximum or a white dot, because if you're trying for five pins, you're probably whiffing some spares. Absolutely. So I would start with one of those um, and go from there. But if that doesn't work, then drill a web tour hybrid. But all right. So anything else, uh, Alyssa, that you kind of want to share with the folks here as they're uh, kind of getting to know you? Um, again, I tried not to talk forever, but it's, it's a, it's hard. It happens. It happens. It keep talking. It's a problem. Um, no, just that I'm really excited for this opportunity. I'm very personable and easy to get along with. If you have any, any questions, it's super easy to reach out to me. I have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of them. Send me a message. I really don't mind at all. But if I'm sleeping from night shift, I kind of mind. <laughs> I, I've been out of memory here working overnight, so I do not miss those days. But uh, um, anyway, um, Alyssa, I want to thank you for your time tonight, uh, for being, you know, kind of stepping up and being that first person that's kind of jumped in here for the uh, the meet the staff. But I couldn't be more pleased to have you um, representing the uh, the East Coast here in Pennsylvania for the Brands of Brunswick. Um, I really look forward to working with you in the future. And uh, as she said, and as I said every time, you know, go out and support Bowling Gang. Uh, if you have questions, reach out to any one of us, and we'll be happy to answer them for you. And uh, Bradley, the last question: When can you get on this segment? I- I'll have to come up with a special day just for you, pal. I miss you. Yeah, I love when you're on here. I love uh, talking back and forth. He's like a son to me. He knows it. But uh, um, yeah, we we enjoyed it. So. Here's your last tidbit before you go off. I did say that the uh, we were going to be doing the web tour hybrid. The funny thing is, uh, talk about it Tuesday is tomorrow night, and our guests are going to be two, and you may have mentioned one of them. So we're going to have a special guest tomorrow night. Okay. Follow, so following up, Alyssa Balicki tomorrow night is going to be Shannon O'Keefe on the feed. Oh, my gosh. And uh, Gary Smith's going to join us as well. Um, to talk about the, uh, the web tour hybrid, we're going to talk about it. So, uh, Everyone, you know, mark your calendars and, uh, you know, stay tuned for tomorrow. Alyssa, hopefully we'll get you down to the uh, the center one of these times when your schedule's uh, not so crazy. And you can throw some balls down the lane for us and we can watch you bowl a little bit and uh, get you awesome. even more involved here in the future. But again, thanks for your time. I had a great time. And uh, all right, guys, that's going to be it for the segment tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. Bye. Uh.